Hello everyone, this is Jozef Nagy here and welcome back to the fourth part of the live stream of this tutorial series where we are uh, calculating the flow over first uh, circle, now it's a sphere and we will continue with that. So first let me just take a look at the chat, for now there is only one uh, comment. Hi Raj, how are you doing? Nice to see you again. So I hope that uh, there are going to be some of you here today. I, I have to confess, I wanted to announce it just as I do usually in the morning, but uh, I was on vacation and this is my first day of work. So I had a lot of emails to answer. So I kind of forgot. So I announced it a bit later than usually, but you can watch it later on once the live stream is rendered as a usual video as well. Hi, Justina, how are you doing? Yeah, thank you, Raj, I'm doing great. Okay, so let's start discussing uh, the, the goals of today. So if you remember in the previous tutorials or the previous live streams, I set up different stages of this tutorial to one, two, three, and today we are going to the fourth version of it and I already uh, prepared a couple of things for today's uh, tutorial so I'm just going to add these and and yeah so I did uh, post a poll last week what you guys would like to change and improve in this case setup so there is there are a couple of uh, points here so maybe we come to that today maybe next time we'll see but uh, for now what i want to do so last time we set up an all run script we just which just generated the the mesh and started the simulation but then I did a little bit of research and I did find a couple of links to, um, to the, where they post the values of the drag of a sphere. So for example, if I take a look at this, um, somehow today my internet connection is very bad. So there is a second PDF here. Uh, yeah, so this is by NASA. Here they have a, a, sca um, a sketch of the CD curve against the Reynolds number. So yeah, here you have a rough idea what it uh, going to happen. So a certain Reynolds number, you have regions and here they have uh, uh, um, estimation of these regions or a idea what the flow will look like. A better one is here with the uh, with this uh, cd versus reynolds number curve but an even better one was this here yeah so here they they have uh, an experimental curve and an analytic function with, uh, for the cd curve versus the reynolds number which i really liked so what i did i uh, put this into Excel and I exported the curves and this is the CD values and I have a CD file and of course after this tutorial I will create a zip file so you will have this um, this text file and then we what we will use is that we, we will plot or CD values to, uh, against this curve so uh, as you can see, I have it on a log logarithmic scale. So it is between 2400 at very low Reynolds numbers and 0 0.22, just like here in this curve. So this is what we can use as a comparison between simulation and experiments. If you guys have any actual text files of measurement data, please let me know because we can also use that as well. Okay, so this is um, the resources that we can use as a reference to. Then another point that I want to do today is the force coefficient setting up because last time I didn't have time to do that. For that, we have a couple of tutorials here. And uh, yes, let me just open up um, a terminal here. 
and uh, let me just go to here to motorbike yeah so in system force coefficients here we have a set of force coefficients uh, this is for the motorbike case so of course we have to modify this but uh, we can use that for our case and make a copy of it so YouTube live and then tut4 and then in the case no so in control dict I will now add this function here only not the visualization function object only the force coefficient function object here and then copy from here the force coefficient and then all I have to do is case system and so these two should be fine yeah so here we uh, include the force coefficients and now we have to ch make uh, change these entries okay so there is a comment by Raj please share links in the chat both so we can go through the details later or after this session sure I can um, the thing is that if somebody posts a link into the uh, into the comment then it is often linked as spam by YouTube but I will uh, what I will do I will just uh, save this into this tut4 uh, um, folder and then in the zip file you will have the links okay now it's called now new 2.txt uh, that's not what I wanted so new 2 let's just call it links txt and then you have it later on I will upload the zip file like every time to my github account and then you can just go there if this uh, live stream is converted into a video then afterwards you will have the description in the description box below the download link as well okay so first things first let's take a look at the force coefficients so for the patches which patches do we have I I'm not 100% sure uh, okay so <laughs> uh, what would be the best way to so I believe we set up block mesh and snappy hex mesh I mean I quickly could just run these cases so we have sites inlet and outlet and then in addition to that we have sphere so we want to calculate the drag coefficient on the sphere so I'm just going to copy here uh, sphere and since we have we are running pimple foam so we you use an incompressible solver so we have to define row infinity and yes yeah, so we can just assume a density of one or we can just um, possibly Google just to make sure that I'm using the correct uh, uh, entry then city not of hydrogen but of air yeah so let's just use this as the reference value if you're not satisfied with this value then you can of course change this and then run it yourself okay then uh, possibly we really should start the simulation or just run the all run script just for a simple reason so we have a reference frame here at least for the mesh okay snappy is running now let's wait for it to finish good thing that I did that last time already okay you're wel welcome Raj Okay, so how far are we now? Please. 
Okay, so we are almost at the end. This is the cheap version of <laughs> Tail. Okay, so it finished. Now I can open up. Uh, no, okay, now it's running this. Okay, so then I don't have an open.foam file here. So I'm just going to do here the cheap version of the hack open.foam. And now I can open it up in Paraview. So let's see the directions. So we have the sphere inside inlet outlet. Okay, which one is which? So inlet is okay. So this is the inlet. So we have a flow in the positive x direction. So we have to change here the drag direction is the positive. Uh, is the positive uh, x direction yes yeah, so the lift direction is yeah difficult to tell which one is the the lift direction so in the motorbike case it was the z direction we can leave it because the pitch axis is then the y so possibly this is a good idea but let me know in the comment section whether you think it is a good idea to use to the lift direction, the Z direction, because it's uh, that there is a, a symmetry between the Y and the Z direction here. Yeah, and then the center here is at zero, zero, zero. So we can leave, uh, okay, all we have to modify is here for the middle point. And then the magnitude is something that we have to modify each and every time. So currently for the case, we are using a velocity magnitude of 0.001 okay so this is a very very low number and then our reference length is of course one meters this is the diameter and then we have to use the projected area so this is then the circle the area of the circle this is the the radius so 0 0.5 uh, to the power of 2 times pi this is then 0 0.85 square meters so this is now our force coefficient here and this is going to be outputted during the case setup so here we have force coefficient of course here the incorrect values are being taken but here we have a uh, CD value yeah so uh, now it is uh, being outputted here okay so this is something that I wanted to set up here uh, good and then the simulation also finished that is very good all clean very good yeah we don't have the paths that is correct good so this was the first thing that i wanted to take care of the force coefficient and then lo uh, load it cal calculate it uh, during runtime and then the second thing that i wanted to do this and this may be important also for you uh, I wanted to also somehow get an idea about the Reynolds number. Of course, we can calculate it manually. So we can just use the velocity times uh, the, um, the diameter and then the um, viscosity. But I really found this and maybe we can use this, maybe not. This CFD online entry here where someone I'm not sure what why my internet is so slow. Um, so HPE implemented a function object to calculate the Reynolds number because there is no such function objects, which really puzzled me that you can calculate the Kuro number and the Mach number, but not the Reynolds number. So what I did, I downloaded this. I extracted the Reynolds number and then what I did here, I placed this SRC function objects and fields. And then here it is, I placed this folder Reynolds NO here. 
And then what I did, I opened up make and the files file and then I added an entry here after the Mach number with Reynolds number. And then what I executed was W make. This compiles the, the fields function object, the, the library again, including the Reynolds number. So with this, we can calculate the Reynolds number during the simulation runtime, which is maybe an important um, um, uh, thing or not. But uh, I, I thought that this is an important, uh, an interesting community com contribution. It is a single post without <laughs> any comments. Might be helpful to someday to someone. So I am now bringing this to you. Possibly you can utilize it. So all we have to do now is add this line to our control dict, which I have here, and add the Reynolds number. Yeah, so lib function objects, it's the say, oh no, it's the fo forces function object. Okay, a field function objects, we have a length uh, a scale of one, so this is correct. And then I want to write out at write time, that is fine possibly for me. And then, uh, yeah, so I think that's, uh, and then we can visualize the Reynolds number and then compare it what we would uh, do, um, uh, what we would use here, uh, what we would calculate here. Uh, okay, so, uh, so, so th this is, uh, we can, we'll calculate the Reynolds number as well and then use this as a reference as the, for the x-axis when we compare it to the actu uh, to experimental data. Okay, so that is it. That was the first couple of things that I wanted to add to our case setup. Okay, there is another comment uh, by Raj. Can you recommend a microphone for YouTube recording? I tried with small one, which I am but I did not get good sound. So I am using a uh, Blue Yeti X uh, microphone. This is what I've been using previously. I had the previous version of this uh, for years and now a couple of, uh, a year ago or one and a half years ago, I changed it to a more recent Blue Yeti mic. So <laughs> I hope this helps. Okay, so the next step that I want to do here is go to your comment sections. Okay, so you want to, so let's start at the, at the end. So dynamic mesh, uh, I'm not sure what we can change here regarding dynamic mesh. Maybe you can elaborate on that convective boundary conditions. Okay, so this is something that we can change then later on, on the, uh, the initial conditions. Mesh quality and resolution is a big issue. Yeah, so first things first, what I want to do is now set up a, some kind of an include file here. So uh, not here, but for snappy hex mesh and also block mesh, um, I want to take this and then include and then possibly include.txt. So let's um, block mesh resolution. Okay, and I will save this here as include Somehow I cannot save after last update of Notepad++. So I'm just going to save it as new2.txt. This is a pain, of course. Yeah, so no, I want to call this include. Okay, so this is, and what I did here, so it should look one level up, so that's in mesh, and then another level up, which is in tut4, ah, okay, that's one level too much. <clears throat> uh, 
and then use the entry here. So if I just go now to mesh and then execute block mesh, then it will uh, correctly find this resolution. So in this include file, we can now only access the resolution. Then I also want to, yeah, so the second point is the, in snappy hex mesh, I want to extract here this entry, level one, and then also this here, level one, one, and then include that first here and here. Okay, so <laughs> snappy and trees with this now Uh, okay, so I have to copy it. <coughs> and now... Uh, no, what, what's the problem on line 82? So that is not going to work here, unfortunately. For some weird reason. Okay, so let me just, okay, then let's just call, try it this way. Yeah, this works. Uh, what is the problem here? Yeah, I, I think that here this, uh, these entries are. Okay, I, I will look into this. So I wanted to extrude this, but possibly we have to leave this. And then another entry is that I want to change is the number of layers and then the expansion ratio. This is something that I want to include here and then another or maybe if I get rid of this and then mm, does this work? Question. No, that doesn't work. Okay. Okay. So then mm, yeah, usually this works. So uh, as you can see, I did not prepare this. Uh, I really should do these things, uh, but it's a live stream. So it's also an, the point of <laughs> finding difficulties. Okay, so th that's something I want to extrude, uh, extract here. And then let's maybe just extrude and then I will take a look at it later. Okay, so the number of layers is what I want to extrude here into this include file and control in one file. And then also the expansion ratio, possibly something I want to add here. And then what is another point? Yes, so I want to uh, take a look at and also change here the the velocity so that is something i also want to change then later on and then of course i want to change the velocity entry here okay and of course the end time possibly at later points we will have to change the end time as well. Okay, but for now let's uh, leave this and I will take a look at this until our next um, our next live stream to uh, whether this works with the include file or not. Okay, so that's it. And then let's go, go through the comments here, perhaps not toot, but something is strong. Okay, so that's not toot four, three. Layer generation, yes. So possibly we can change to uh, CF mesh, yes. So I would block mesh. Okay, so block mesh with a finer area. So, so this is why I uh, extracted this block mesh entry. So we can just change here the resolution easily. 
boundary condition for an airfoil simulation. Yes, yeah, so this is the advective, so the, this is also the convective boundary condition that we can take a look at later on. Oscillations uh, of the... Uh, okay, so maybe that was also the point of the dynamic mesh here. Oh no, it's not the downward, it's... Okay, I like it. Okay, so oscillations, yeah, that's something that we could add at a later point, but for now I want to concentrate on a stationary wall functions, calculate and apply k and epsilon and omega, yeah, that's something that we can do, of course. Uh, yeah, so now everything should be set up now it's running very good so i just now all clean it and then let's take a look at the all run script okay so now this will just uh, create the mesh and run the same uh, case setup and yes so we can take a look at the results and then also possibly see the Reynolds number, whether this function object worked and, yeah, and then progress from there. What I would suggest is that it doesn't make sense to now run a couple of simulations uh, live because we just I just sit here and then look into the camera and you wait look at me looking at the camera and waiting for the simulations to finish so so yeah then I would suggest to for, for me to start a couple of simulations and then in the next uh, live stream we take a look at the results and then with your comments then we can make some uh, refinements Oh, and then see whether we can fit the this uh, this curve that I showed you from this PDF, and then I also included it into the tut4 folder. Yes, yeah, so the cd txt is something that we can then plot against. Possibly in the meantime, I can copy and I will give this to you from my no so I want to what is this patreon and then what is polyline yes so this is what I want and then case o post and then this probe.xy. So as you can see, I'm doing also um, uh, tutorials on Patreon, speci uh, special tutorials. And so if you're interested, please check out my Patreon page. And if you want to support me, you can do that there. I appreciate every support. Okay, then um, probe. Okay, so at first I want to just add the cd.txt file and then, yeah, so let, let's just take a look at the results of the, the, C, the, the curve that I plotted. So the y is cd, this is the Reynolds number. And this starts, the CD starts at 0 0.01 and goes until 10 to the power of minus 7. Um, and then the, so the X is from some, okay, that I, that was a mistake. So the Reynolds number is until 10 to the power of 7. Yes. And then this is going th from, let's see in this PDF, 0 0.01, so that's correct, until 0 0.04, yes. Oh no, 10 to the power of four. So no X ticks here. And yes, yeah, so we have to 
use a log scale I never know GNU plot log scale I'm not sure about my internet today GNU plot log scale yeah set log scale y okay so I never know this by heart set log scale x and then now we can just execute probe dot uh, not probe values but maybe cd okay and now we have now a cd curve yes so th this looks good this is the cd curve that i wanted to see here very good and now did we finish here yes so we can open up the simulation results here uh, good open.form file let's cut through the z coordinate here okay yes so we have a velocity profile so it is almost the same here and with uh, what would be the Reynolds number let's just I oh know we can take a look at the Reynolds number here yeah very good so our mean Reynolds number is somewhere around 60 or 80 so let's take a look at if I calculate 0 0.001 times 1 divided by 10 to the power of minus 5 what was the exact value yeah so this is what it was so i would calculate this to be 100 reynolds number of 100 okay yeah so this is our uh, what we have here in the uh, at the end so this is our mean reynolds number at the end so locally it calculates a lower value so yes so it is always the question whether it makes to define a local reynolds number but far away we have a reynolds number of 100 and yeah so that's fine and uh, maybe we can take a look at the post-processing folder and then see what we have here so we have here a value of 130 no that's 13.2 uh, where was it 13.2 at 100 we should be at 1 so I'm not sure what is here the error but okay but maybe I take a look look at it so obviously there is some uh, mistake here I, 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 I will take a look at it so don't you worry about it so so there is a deviation here between the simulation results and this curve but if you find the error then please let me know the, in the comment section I, until the next time i will correct it so i'm not sure why we get here 30 or a cd value of 13 rather than the value of one that we most probably see also here yeah, so it should be 1 at a Reynolds number of 100. Oh, well, that's something to improve in future. Okay, so I think that is going to be it. I am going to stop recording now because I have to uh, make sure that uh, some things uh, are correct. And I will also run a couple of simulations at different Reynolds numbers, maybe even lower the velocity to have lo lower values and then go maybe also into the turbulent region and then see how far I come. And then I will, uh, I will make a community post about it. You can take a look at the TUT4 results and also possibly my simulation results. And in our next live stream, we will then uh, evaluate it and then 
possibly improve the mesh and also improve the simulation case setup. Okay, so if there are no additional questions, I believe that was it for today. So again, sorry that I forgot to <laughs> mention that today is a live stream, but you can check out the video later on as a normal video. I hope that at least these three, uh, the force coefficient and then the Reynolds number function object you can utilize.